Hello everyone and welcome to my first ever video. I'm um, at the bee yard which is at Jerry's house and um, it's a beautiful day in April. Sun is just coming out, it's still very early, it's about 11 a.m. and what we're doing today is installing two new bee colonies. So two of the three of Jerry's hives which are the ones here died over the winter and so what we'll do today is replace those colonies. So they come in a box like this, you can get them in the mail or you can just pick them up. They're about $140 for each box and that comes with 10,000 bees and a bread queen. So they go by the pound, so these are actually three pounds of bees. Nobody counted that they're 10,000, give or take. So they are just kind of huddling down right now and they got an inverted sugar feeder here. So they have some sugar to eat, but um, they just been in the car for two hours. so. They're probably very confused, but you know, they're very, very gentle right now. And you know, they won't really hurt me because they're in swarm mode, which means they don't have a home to defend and bees will only really sting if they have a home to defend. So these are just, these are just, uh, you know, to love you and not to, not to hurt you. Now, if I put my finger in one of these hives, I will get hurt, but, but these not yet. So the queen is in her own separate cage the cage is hanging at the top here and she is in her own cage because if she weren't these bees might kill her because they will go through a lot of stress during the travel and one of the things that bees do when they get too stressed is they they got to blame someone and so the queen's gonna take the blame so they will kill her which is why she's in a separate cage so she's protected but we'll I'll show you that in a bit here are the existing hives so this is the one that made it through the winter and still waking up, not much activity. These are the two that died, which we'll be replacing. And then here, this is my hive, at the very end, also still waking up. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. One of the things that's amazing about bees is they just keep going. Like They don't care that we're in the middle of a coronavirus lockdown, that somebody trashed my garden plot, that my paper got rejected, that my experiments aren't working. You know, these bees, they just, Keep going. And they're so, so cute. I'm I'm bringing in the pollen. That's a drone right there, the big one you can see. All right, so Queen is here. And hello. Hello. Hello, bees. Now. Go lift it up. Yep, I'm doing it. Right. Just gonna. Oh, I got it. Okay. Here is Queen, and we'll just shake him off a bit so you guys can film, so we can film her. So this is, what is this name? This was Debra for the Debra number, or yeah. Pekle for the, for the, the Russian hybrid. All right, and now, this guy's ruined my pants. Okay. And then, now that your mama's gone, we'll shake you guys up in the hive. So the queen is, oops, ouch. Ugh. So the queen is in there on this frame. Right. And the bees are still in this box. Now they will find the queen because she smells good. And then they'll come and get her. Um, or, well, they can't get her because she's in a cage. Um, but we can also just help it along by shaking these bees all in there. And the queen is in a cage that's plugged by a candy that takes three days to eat. So in three days, she'll be out. A sugar plug, that's right. And just out of precautionary measures, there's a bee suit because who wants to get stung, you know? And bees tumbling out. And then the rest of them will walk in once they know where the queen is and where everybody else is. All right, beautiful. So I thought they were peaceful, but they are Russian. So a little bit, I should edit that out. So they're making a fanning noise, which means they, usually that means they're happy. That means they found a home and that's what they need to signal. But look at them fan. The queen is, they are in, in, uh, in, in the swarm. Yeah, so they'll be 
probably go in and, and touch them. Ooh, look at you. So these, wait, yep, these bees are now being shaken in there. This was the old feeder. And fortunately I am wearing red, which wasn't so clever, so maybe I should back up. I don't have a suit. Okay. What's the viscosity of a, of a, of a bee <laughs> aggregate? I don't know. <laughs> There's all that heat transport going on in there too with the fanning. It's a complicated situation. They are fanning and trying to reorganize. Isn't that beautiful? Now they can just take this chaos and from it they will build order. And he's in there, he's in the cage. It's covered in bees, yeah, she can't. Oh my god, look at you guys. So cute. Yeah. All right. We're putting the sugar feeder, which is going right there instead of the entrance. And in about three days, we'll take that off and then they can go fly, collect their own nectar. No All more right. free lunch. That's right, just like grad school right now. Close down. Yeah. My food budget is through the roof. That's an aside. All right. So that's it. Now all we really do is wait for these guys to crawl in and then we'll close it all back, oops, close it all back up. And in three days, we can open it up here and then they'll start coming out and collect nectar. Jerry Fuller, and <laughs> you just met Tim. Tim uh, was a, a student of mine when he was an undergrad in chemical engineering. Now he's a PhD student in bioengineering and uh, we're both avid beekeepers, although Tim has become my teacher. And, uh, <laughs> and I really appreciate his help uh, keeping these little guys alive. But uh, it's a lot of fun, Tim.